All right, what I like to do is show you guys how to graph the line when given missing parts. And what I particularly mean when I'm saying missing parts is, let's say I have a, we know that, we know that an equation can be put in the form of y equals mx plus b. And from there, we know that m is going to represent our slope, and b is going to represent our y-intercept. And a quick, uh, a quick thing to remember about our slope, remember slope is our change in y over our change in x. And when I'm talking about y and x, I'm talking about the y and x values of a point. And when I'm talking about y-intercept, I'm talking about where a graph crosses the y-axis. So when looking at an equation like here, what I want to do is I want to make sure it's in y equals mx plus b form. And looking at here, is this variable solved for y just like it did in both of them? And you could say yes. And on both these equations, I have a y solved for. Or I solve for y. However, in this equation, I do not have an x variable. And what I can equate to not have an x variable is I could say, well, that x variable has could particularly be multiplied by 0. Because 0 times x would give you 0. And we don't really need to write 0 plus 7. So therefore, what I can determine is my y-intercept is going to be 7, and my slope is going to be 0. Another way to look at it is if I graph this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I know the y-intercept's at 7. And it's giving me a straight line. And what I would notice also is if I picked any two points on this graph, like these two far points, do I have any change in the height between the two points? No. So you'd say the change in y would be 0 over the change in x, which could be any amount of number, let's say 8. It's still going to give me a slope of 0. All right? So we know that a graph like that is going gonna, is gonna to be a straight line because if we remember going back to our days of a table, and I told you when you're given a problem like this, you just write, we know that y always equals 7. However, x can equal whatever numbers you want to pick. You can pick negative 4, you can pick 0, and you could pick 4. And what you'll notice is no matter what value you pick for x, y always equals 7. The same thing is exactly true for when x equals 3 halves. Again, when trying to graph this, when trying to graph this, I'm going to have my x and my y values. Well, we already know that x always equals 3 halves. And all I need to do is really pick my values for y, which I can pick 2, 0, and negative 2. So 3 halves is really 1.5, so it'd be roughly around here. And if I go to 2, 1.5, 0, 1.5, and negative 2, 1.5, what I notice is I'm going to get a nice vertical line. All right, and then when I'm looking at my change over here, what I can say is, well, my change in y, let's say is 4, and my change in x would be 0. And remember, we can never divide by 0. So that's why this slope is not 0, but the slope is what we call undefined. OK? And that's why you're not going to see anything with that x is in terms of y equals mx plus b. One thing, it doesn't have a y-intercept. It never crosses the y-axis. And the slope is undefined. So that's why x equals 3 halves, that's never going to be in your slope-intercept form. It doesn't even have y-intercept, nor does it even have a slope that's defined. So um, when graphing straight lines or not given, when you're just given a y equals a number or x equals a number, try to fit them into the form. But you're best likely to go and graph them is just remember that when y equals, that's going to be a horizontal. And when x, you're going to have a horizontal line. So that's how you graph a line when you have missing parts.